What is going on guys? Hank here from Spruce and Brews Scale Modeling, wishing you guys a very happy Star Wars Day. Today we'll be building this 1 72nd scale TIE Advanced from Bandai Hobby as a special project to mark the occasion. If you don't have a lightsaber handy, regular spruce nippers will work just fine for getting your parts off the sprue. Starting with the cockpit here, these Bandai kits snap together so even the youngest Padawan can enjoy this build, nice and easy. Here we've sprayed the interior with Vallejo Black Primer to prepare for painting, and no TIE Fighter would be complete without the Dark Lord of the Sith himself. We'll start by painting up our cockpit walls with Dunkel Grau from Ammo Mig. And don't forget to paint the details of Lord Vader's armor here. Some Vallejo aluminum will do just fine for this. Perfect. Ready to take on the Rebel Alliance. Now we can use some ammo dark wash to accentuate the details of our cockpit. With the main fuselage assembled here, we can move on to some of our external details. My World War II modelers should recognize this piece. It's a bogey from an M4 Sherman. Pretty clever engineering there from the folks over at Bandai. Wonder if that was on the original model of the TIE Advanced here. Alright, so now we have to mask up our canopy. Uh, to me, a masking tape works pretty well for this, and we can use a toothpick to trace out the frames of this cockpit here, uh, the canopy rather. Um, they have pretty obvious frame lines to follow, and we can kind of trace those out. Once that's done, we can take a fresh blade here in our hobby knife and cut along the uh, tracing we just did, carefully, not to damage the plastic piece, and make ourselves some nice DIY homemade masks. Look at that, perfect. Who needs pre-cut masks anyway? Now it's time to attach the canopy and the roof, and we'll seal up the interior of the ship. With that complete, we can move on to the rear of the fuselage, as this is a TIE Advance. It's not just that regular pod in the center there. And of course, no TIE Fighter is complete without a nice set of laser cannons. Now this part's a little tricky, but with some practice you can kind of figure it out. We're going to use the same technique that we used for our cockpit. Just kind of trace out the lines um, using some Tamiya masking tape here. And then again, we're going to go along with our fresh hobby knife, cut off the excess here, and peel that away. Don't worry about any of the uh, flaking primer there. We're going to paint over that again, so no sweat. We're going to repeat that for all of the panels on our wings, which is relatively time consuming, but just go slow, be patient, and the results will pay off in the end. Moving on to painting here, first things first, we're going to get our Vallejo black primer out again and hit the whole vehicle with that. Thank you. 
if you don't have any Imperial gray specifically for Star Wars vehicles here, um, this gray highlight from Ammo Make works pretty well. And again, we're gonna spray the whole vehicle with that gray highlight. Beautiful, looking great. Now it's gonna be time to remove the masks that we created for our wing panels here. Just do this carefully with your hobby knife and a pair of tweezers. And as you can see, we've got that nice crisp black panel behind our mask, just as we wanted. We're gonna grab a little Tamiya copper paint here um, and just accentuate the tips of our laser cannons here for a little extra detail. And then we're gonna hit the whole build with a clear coat of AK Interactive Intermediate Gauzy Agent. It's gonna protect our ship before we start weathering. To recreate the grime of space combat, we're gonna use this Flory Dark Wash. And this is a clay-based wash, so once that's completely dried, we can wipe away the excess with a damp paper towel. This stuff is really great. It's super user-friendly, easy to work with. Um, you just sludge it on the whole build, and when it's dry, like I said, you just get a wet paper towel, and you can wipe off as much or as little as you want. And as we'll see in just a second here, it gives us a beautiful uh, panel accent um, wash. really like this stuff. As you can see here with the excess wash removed, we've got some beautiful panel detailing there, especially in those open sections where you can see some of the hardware of the ship. Again, love this stuff, it's super versatile. You can use it for armor, you can use it for aircraft, you can use it for spaceships. So we're gonna spray the whole vehicle with a final coat of ammo lucky matte varnish to seal in our hard work. And then we're just gonna have a few steps left here. Even with the force, it's usually helpful to be able to see out of your cockpit. So we're going to get the masks off of our cockpit and off the roof here. Next, we're going to pop both of our wings on there. As I mentioned in the beginning, this is a Bandai kit, so they'll just snap right on. And we've got this handy little display base included in the kit that, if you want, you can paint up and weather separately. I haven't today, but I'll revisit it at some point. We've also got these two blaster effects, which is very nice. We'll pop those in there for a fun little touch. And there you have it. Bandai's 172nd scale TIE Advanced. Um, yeah, had a fun little project with this one. Threw it together in probably just a couple sessions at the bench. And it was a fun little change of pace from the usual World War II stuff. So happy Star Wars Day, my friends. May the force be with you. Um, if you'd like to check out some more of my builds, you can do so right here. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.